Hi guys, it's Ivy. So I'm going to be teaching you how to do a career reading for yourself or for someone else. Disclaimer, you need to know what the planets and the signs and the houses mean or else this video is going to be completely useless to you. So make sure you study those. All right, so this is your mama's dumpies chart and we're going to find out what career is best suited for her. These are going to be things that she's naturally drawn to, also things she probably already has an interest in. This is where her talents are going to be best utilized in a career. So first you want to look at the 10th house. Why? Because the 10th house is the house of career. If there are planets in the 10th house, then you want to describe those planets. Planets in the 10th house are going to say something about their career. This chart does not have any planets in the 10th house. So the next thing you want to do is look at the planet that rules the 10th house. So in your mama's dumpy's chart, her 10th house is in Pisces and the ruler of Pisces is Jupiter. So we looked at the chart, where's Jupiter? Jupiter is in Aries in the 11th house. So we can go ahead and analyze Jupiter to figure out what type of career your mama's dumpy is gonna have. So I know that Jupiter is a planet that is about law and order. Jupiter helps people see the natural or the higher truths of the world, of the universe, of humanity, of reality, all that kind of stuff. I know that Jupiter likes to be in positions of power and Jupiter likes to make decisions on behalf of other people that will impact their lives. So I'm gonna take all that information that I have about Jupiter and I'm gonna brainstorm some types of careers that this person could have. They could work in law, they could work as a teacher, they could work as a senator, they could work in a religious environment. Jupiter likes to tell people what to do or the right way to do things, the best way to do things, the most lawful way to do things. And this is where you start to brainstorm all the different ways that Jupiter could show up as a career. The next thing you want to look at is the sign that Jupiter is in. Jupiter is in Aries. So again, what's Aries all about? I know that Aries is ruled by Mars. So this person could have a job that has to do with some Mars things. Maybe they work with fire or weapons or sharp objects or tools or heavy machinery. Maybe they are an activist and they're fighting on behalf of someone else. Maybe they work in a dangerous environment, something that's life-threatening. Maybe they are in a position of authority. Maybe they are an activist and they're fighting for what they believe in or they're fighting injustice. Now, at this point, my skills as an astrologer, I am seeing that there is a connection here between Jupiter and Aries. Remember how I said Jupiter likes to make decisions that are going to impact a large group of people. Well, now I see that Aries is here and Aries likes to fight on behalf of others. So this could really put this person like working in law or working in politics or having some type of career where they are advocating for something or fighting on behalf of someone else. Now, the next thing we wanna look at is the 11th house. I know that the 11th house is about friends, it's about community, it's about hopes and dreams. Now, as soon as I said community, my astrologer brain started to put the pieces together. We already have Jupiter making decisions that's gonna impact a group of people, Aries fighting on behalf of others, and then the 11th house has to do with community. It's really looking like this person probably has a job in activism or advocacy or law or something like that. I think that they are responsible for a lot of people or they are making decisions that are impacting a group, a community of people. Now there are other things in a birth chart that can describe someone's career. Something else we can look at is the midheaven. If you use whole signs like what I am using, you'll see that the 10th house and the midheaven See how they're in two different signs. The 10th house is in Pisces, the midheaven is in Aquarius. This describes nuance or gives you more details about this person's career. Now the midheaven usually describes a person's reputation. This is what they are known for. This is the image that they have in their community. This is their claim to fame, right? Like this is what they get famous for. This is what they become well known for. Now in Yamama's dumpy chart, um, she has Saturn conjunct her midheaven. I usually don't interpret the midheaven unless there's a planet conjunct it. And the reason why I do it this way is because whenever a planet is conjunct the midheaven or any of the angles, um, that planet gets amplified, right? It becomes very important and very loud. Otherwise, the midheaven is kind of just chilling in a house doing its own thing. And like I talked about earlier, if you want to 
give the chart a little bit of nuance, a little extra flavor, you can interpret the midheaven, even if there's not a planet conjunct it. But if there is a planet conjunct it, you absolutely want to interpret it. It's going to be very important. Now, your mama's dumpy has Saturn conjunct her midheaven, which means there is something about Saturn that's really describing her reputation, you know, what she's known for, her claim to fame, what everybody sees her as. Now, I know that Saturn rules outcast, right? It rules people who don't belong. So there's something about your mama's dumpy and working with marginalized people, or maybe being known as someone who works with people who are in dire or extreme situations in their life. Maybe she works with people who are very unusual, like they deviate from the norm looking at Aquarius here, people who are very spectacular or out of the ordinary. So if I combine that with her Jupiter placement, I'm really getting that, you know, she is someone who is making decisions for a community. And I think that this community of people may be marginalized people or people who are outcasts or people who are just different. You know, they have some extreme characteristics or some extreme behaviors going on in their life, Aquarius being extremes. Now, if you want, you can also interpret the ninth house. I usually don't. I usually just stop right there because the conjunction really gives me everything I need. But if I was to include the ninth house, you know, I would say, you know, maybe there's an element of traveling or teaching again, you know, Jupiter being the teacher. Uh, maybe there is an element of faith or spirituality. Um, the ninth house can also rule your like beliefs, your belief system. Um, which could, again, lend itself to like politics, which we can bring that back to Jupiter. Now, there's one more way that you can figure out what someone's career is going to be. And that's by looking at something in the chart that really stands out to you. Now, that could be a variety of things, right? It could be a stellium. It could be a planet conjunct one of the angles. It could be a planet conjunct um, the North Node. It could be a planet that is in a very tight aspect. With another planet it could be a planet that has a lot of dignity like a planet that it is in its domicile or exaltation but it's really going to be something in the chart that your eyes like gravitate towards like you can't not look at it now looking at this chart there's something i just can't stop seeing can you guys guess what it is come on dora what is it say backpack say backpack it's the scorpio stellium in the sixth house right now stelliums can be very important when it comes to career because this is showing a place where a lot of the person's energy is focused on, you know? This is something that they think about a lot. This is something that they do a lot. This is something that they're constantly going back to. So this could easily be something that they turn into a career. Now, when it comes to stelliums, I like to interpret them based on the house and based on the sign. And then the ruler. But when it comes to a career reading, I'm really just going to focus on the house and the sign. Now, one mistake I see people making when they are interpreting stelliums is they're trying to combine, oh, what is the moon and the south node and Venus and the sun? What does it all mean together? If I put these four things together, what does it mean? No, 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 no. Don't do that. When you do that, you're missing the bigger picture, right? There's a bunch of stuff happening in the sixth house and there's a bunch of stuff happening in Scorpio. What could this be trying to tell us? Well, I know that Scorpio is ruled by Mars. So again, kind of like with Aries, this person could be in a job where they are in like dangerous work conditions or they are working with, you know, weapons or machinery or tools. Um, specifically with this being Scorpio, they could have a job where they are like a researcher or an investigator. You know, Scorpio likes to dig deep and it likes to reveal things that are hidden, you know, and especially if I look at the sun, right? The sun's here, the moon's here, right? Those are luminaries, those are lights. So there's something about shedding light on something that may be hard to see, hard to reach, hard to access. So their job may include revealing information that people don't know about or people didn't know exists or something that's very, very important that's a little hidden, a little harder to access. And I can tie that in really well with Saturn on the midheaven and Jupiter in the 11th house. Why? Because we talked about 
marginalized people, right? Marginalized people, uh, usually we don't know about them, right? Because they're on the outskirts, right? So with Scorpio coming in, it's like, no, I'm shedding light on these people, right? And then again, Jupiter, it's like, I am advocating for them. I'm fighting for them. I'm giving a voice. I'm giving them a voice, you know. Now, at this point, I have my story for your mama's dumpy, right? I'm pretty sure I know what she's going to be doing, right? She's going to be fighting on behalf of others, people who don't have a voice, people who are forgotten, you know, people who other people don't care about, so, you know, something like that. Like, she's probably going to be a bit of an activist, you know, something like that you know she's really fighting for the marginalized people you know people of color uh immigrants uh orphans um sex workers uh, the disabled the elderly um did i already say people of color lgbt people like whatever you know what i mean like marginalized people she is shedding a light on um, these folks. So I already have my story about what she's doing, but if I wanted to, I could interpret the sixth house. The sixth house is a house of sacrifice, right? Um, you can even see it as like a house of suffering or a house of giving yourself for something else. I already said sacrifice, right? Yeah. So I can really tie that in with what I just talked about. You know, when you are fighting for the rights of marginalized people, you're often having to sacrifice something, right? Sacrifice on behalf of them. The more you practice, the better you'll get at it. As you see, I created a story, right? I made everything fit together, but you don't have to do that, right? Like it's okay to give them a list of all the possible careers that they could have. And if you're like, ah, this is so many careers, how do I know which one is the right one? You don't know, right? Uh, so if this is your chart, what stuff are you more drawn to? Have you ever had interest in any of the things on your list? Also, you're gonna be alive for like 90 years or something. So at some point in your life, you could literally switch careers right you could be doing one thing and then switch to do another so everything in the chart could easily be a possibility at some point in your life